What's going on everybody, Matt Hefner here for On The Water and today we are bringing you our week four striper migration update from the Striper Coast. So beginning with Southern New Jersey, we've got a lot of stripers being reported in the surf. They're biting on clams especially, but small swim shads and paddle tails are getting it done as well. Those same paddle tail swim baits are very productive lures to use around the bridges at night. You toss them along the shadow lines, you'll probably find a couple of fish from the 20 to 30 inch range. That's gonna be pretty standard for this time of year for striped bass fishing in Southern New Jersey. Um, a lot of those back bays are gonna hold plenty of fish, but they're all gonna be around topping out around the 30 inch range. Now you might find a couple of 35 plus inch fish in there, but the best bet for finding those bigger fish is gonna be targeting lighted docks and lighted bridges. Keep an eye on the bait in the area. As of right now, it's a lot of small bait, things like silver sides, mud minnows, which is why those four to five inch paddle tail swim baits are really gonna crush it around the bridges and in the surf. Now, if you're an angler who prefers to use bait over artificial lures, bloodworms are also taking a lot of fish in the back bays, especially at night. Moving up to central and northern New Jersey, we're still getting a lot of reports of fish in the back bays, although the size is a little bit bigger than you'll find down in southern New Jersey around the Cape May area right now. There are a lot of 30 to 40 inch bass reported, including some bass pushing 40 inches in the surf. Earlier this week, Grumpy's Tackle posted a couple pictures of a couple surf caught striped bass. They were throwing the snot, as they love to call it down there. The Grumpy's Tackle team are clam connoisseurs. They really know what they're doing. Definitely stop in there if you're looking for bait. Um, or if you're looking to get the scoop on where the fish are kind of biting recently. Now for anglers fishing the back bays in northern New Jersey, stripers are still crushing swimming plugs like Yozuri mag darters, SP minnows, bombers, things of that nature. But as you move closer to the inlets and out front to the surf, clams have pretty much been the number one producer of surf caught fish in upper New Jersey this week. This is early spring fishing at its finest. The stripers out in front are mostly nosing around for mole crabs and sand fleas, and they will gladly pick up a soft, stinky bait like clams. A little further north in Raritan Bay, there's still plenty of big bait around that's causing a great top water bite. Paddle tail swim baits are still working great. No live bait needed paddle tails have been a number one producer this season up there. And there's still a pretty decent flutter spoon bite. It sounds like if you can find the bait, you're better off using live bait, meaning live bunker. But those flutter spoons are just such a game changer for fishermen who really love artificials. And while there is plenty of striper activity in Raritan Bay, a lot of those bigger fish have started pushing up the Hudson and into Long Island waters. Now, much like New Jersey, as those stripers head east on Long Island towards the tip around Montauk, they're going to be cruising in the surf as well. We've already gotten some great reports from anglers across Long Island on the West End and as far out as the Hamptons. And fish are being caught in everything from flies, clams, bucktails, you name it, the fish are biting it. Around the West End of Long Island in New York City, there have been daily reports of waves of lysed up fish moving into the area following those schools of bunker up the coast. Now, a lot of those fish are moving up the Hudson River, but a lot of them are also pushing up the East River and into the Western Long Island Sound. The bite there has turned on as well this week. We got reports of people catching a lot of fish around the 30 inch mark and up. They're mostly catching on bloodworms and clams around the City Island and Whitestone areas. But it seems like the further east you go, the more willing the bass are to pick up an artificial lure. Earlier this week, I got a message from Tim Wagner who fishes the North Shore Bays of Long Island. He was actually out fishing for Tatog and came in and uh, took a couple casts at a rock pile. And on his last cast, he ended up hooking up with a 37 inch striper. The fish hit a plain white bucktail jig with a fat cow jig strip. And a sure sign that bigger fish have moved into some of those West End bays. Now the fishing on the North Shore tends to not heat up as fast as the South Shore of Long Island. As the bass migrate up the coast, they pretty much run right into the South Shore of Long Island. And that, that's what makes the fishing down there so great this time of year. So whether you're tossing clams in the surf or gliding bucktails over sandy structure on the beach, it's about time to get out there. For light tackle fishermen, the back bays are giving up plenty of good sized fish on bucktails as well. We got a couple reports from anglers across the island around the Great South Bay and Jamaica Bay that are reporting a great bite on bucktails, but also a solid topwater bite. They're hitting uh, spooks and topwater plugs like the Tsunami Talk and Popper very early in the morning, sunrise hours. And while the activity slows down a little bit in the midday, it picks up again at the end of the day after the sun's been beaten down on those muddy and shallow sandy flats. A lot of the bait on South Shore of Central Long Island right now is mostly spearing in the back bays, which means the fly guys have a great opportunity in front of them. Sergio Diaz wasted no time earlier this week. He actually got out in the surf rather than hitting the back bays in the end of the day. And under cloudy skies, he found a couple uh, solid bass in the whitewash there. When you get long, foamy rollers just cruising into the shoreline like that, that is the perfect condition for striped bass fishing, especially under overcast skies. Safe to say I'm a little jealous. But with 20 pounders pushing towards the east end of Long Island as far out as the Hamptons and migratory schoolies already up on Martha's Vineyard, sounds like I shouldn't have too long to wait. So if you're on the north fork of Long Island, you might have to wait a little bit longer for the stripers up there. They tend to really show up around the last week of April. 
maybe the first week of May if it's slow. But across the sound from the North Fork, a lot of striped bass fishermen are reporting great holdover fishing in the rivers. There are a few scattered migratory bass here and there. Most of them are going to be schooly size. A lot of those bigger fish that you're seeing in the rivers are winter holdover striped bass. Now, much like the back bays on Long Island, along the shorelines of a lot of those big Connecticut rivers, there are expansive muddy flats that are perfect for catching striped bass, even in the middle of the day sometimes. When the water's heating up like that, stripers are more prone to feeding activity. And that's been the trend for much of this spring migration with unseasonably warm spring weather. It's gotten the bait activity ramped up. It's gotten the stripers feeding more heavily and the migration is right on time. And there's still a lot to be said for the striped bass fishing around Rhode Island, Martha's Vineyard, and Cape Cod in the islands this week. So to take you through that, here's On the Waters editor, Jimmy Fee. So what was only a rumor last week of the migratory fish in Rhode Island has become full-fledged fact. You are hearing about a lot of migratory stripers being caught in Rhode Island, not only there, but Cape Cod as well. Fishermen on the south side, ocean-facing beaches in Rhode Island are catching schoolies up to about 24 inches uh, and those fish have sea lice on them and last weekend we heard of the first uh, migratory stripers on the south side of Martha's Vineyard and just over the last few days seems like those fish have stormed across Vineyard Sound you're hearing about guys getting them in Buzzards Bay on the south side of the Cape those fish are going to be seeking warmer water so while you might get some on the open beaches probably going to have a better bet finding them in the backwaters finding them on a dropping tide deep into the salt ponds and bays. That's where these schoolies, as they first arrive, are going to be beelining for. That's going to be where the bait is, too. And there is a ton of bait in southern New England right now. We've been seeing bunker. We've been seeing herring. There's squid. There's spearing. Uh, we were out togging from the jetty the other day. There were tons and tons of schools of uh, three to four inch, I think it was spearing, uh, swimming around the jetty. So as more stripers arrive, there is tons of food for them to eat. And uh, we've already heard about some fish, some blitzing happening in Rhode Island, fish on top chasing herring. So things are off to a great start in New England for the striper run as these migratory fish get out. I haven't caught my first migratory striper of the year yet. I, uh, I've, I got my first tog of the season yesterday, and I'm probably going to be looking this weekend, hoping to find that first good bass. And last but not least, as striper season gets underway throughout the entirety of the Northeast, you have the Striper Cup coming up. That is opening on May 1st, just a little bit over a week away. And if you've never heard of the Striper Cup before, that is a five-month-long fishing tournament. But it's a little bit, it's a non-traditional fishing tournament. It's not the biggest fish that wins. You're able to enter three fish a week. It's catch and release. Send in a picture of those fish and a measurement of them. And that enters you in to win that week's prize, which might be a pair of Casa del Mar sunglasses, some Yeti products, a Rapala Lure, pen, fishing rod, and reel, some great swag from Columbia. In fact, everyone that signs up for the Striper Cup gets a striper season box and in that is a columbia performance shirt allure from rapala some other swag and discount codes not to mention your striper cup commemorative pin for the year to see more information on that head to stripercup.com thank you very much for watching this report be sure to uh, check it out next week